What's going on guys and welcome to who to sign for. Now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode. But before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic and I can't stress that enough. They're not designed to be realistic and that the player ratings and potentials of the players may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during the season. Obviously you don't have to follow all the tips. This is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you could sign for a certain club this is mainly aimed at those you out there who may be new to the game and just need a little bit of advice or for those you out there who just want a few recommendations on what players to sign for a team that you may be using in career mode this year so in today's episode of who to sign for guys we are going to take a look at manchester city one of the richest clubs in the world and one of the richest clubs in the game they start off with a budget around 167 million pounds an extraordinary transfer budget it's absolutely gigantic and of course they are a five star our team which has very little negatives but what comes with an amazing team and a massive budget massive objectives in the first season with Manchester City as you can see you need to retain your domestic double you don't need to worry about the Carabao Cup because that's never an objective but you need to retain the Premier League and win the FA Cup once again and in the Champions League after last season Manchester City were knocked out by the eventual finalist Tottenham Hotspur in the quarterfinals you got to win the Champions League in your first season and pick up the Holy grail which the city fans and the board are so desperate for so yeah your aims could not be stronger basically you got to win everything in the first season as we know the Carabao Cup never gets counted in the objectives so don't need to worry about retaining that but again the FA Cup the Premier League got to be retained and you got to win Manchester City their first ever Champions League in the first season that is very hard to do for any team but when you take a look at this team and you take a look at the quality of the team as well it is definitely achievable especially with a hundred 167 million pounds in your starting transfer budget as well. Now, I just take a look at the side right now. It is fantastic. It is really, really strong. There are some absolutely world-class players, as you already know, and there's some decent young talent in the reserves too, and there's a couple of which out on loan right now, uh, including the young American goalkeeper, Zach Steffen, as well. But yeah, very, very good team. Very, very strong. And one of the good things about City as well is that it's not all aging as well. There are some aging players here that you would like to shift on, but for the most part, it's a really decent team and it features a lot of players that are in their early to mid to perhaps late 20s as well. So City of course line up in a 4-3-3. You can see their line up here. Front three pronged attack is Sterling on the left, Silver on the right and Sergio Aguero, the Argentine, the striker as well. But a very strong first 11 and a very strong bench as well. Reserves definitely could do some improvement for the most part. It's just a bunch of kids but there's some good quality youngsters in there but you probably would like to strengthen the depth of the team a little bit. And as for contract problems, there are quite a few players just one year left in their deal. The most noteworthy ones are Claudio Bravo, David Silva and Fernandinho. As we know, David Silva is almost definitely going to be leaving come the end of the season after several years at the Etihad Stadium. Now, personally speaking, you don't have to give contracts to any of those players in their 30s. I would let Bravo go or try and sell him in the first window as he's now 36 years old and 77 rated. David Silva, 88 rated. I'd, I'd keep him if you want to, but for realism's sake, you might want to just let him go on a free transfer. That's up to you. But I would still keep Fernandinho, despite the fact he's now 34 years old. He's 87 rated, and I'm a massive fan of Fernandinho in real life. He is such an intelligent player and uh, a really awesome player to watch as well. So yeah, I'll give Fernandinho a new contract. But as for Silver and Bravo, I'd say that's up to you. And for the youngsters, I'd let them all go. But for new signings with Manchester City, with £167 million in the transfer budget, the one area I would look to improve on with Manchester City is their defence. To bolster that back line, and most importantly, bring bring in a world-class centre-half. As we know this season, they've had centre-back problems due to the key injuries for some of their best players in that position. My objective with Man City in the first window was to bring in one of the best centre-backs in the world and in the game. And it's this guy right here, Kalidou Koulibaly of Napoli. He's 28 years old. He's 89 rated. He's one of the highest rated centre-backs in the game. And this guy is going to cost you an absolute fortune to bring in. Now, his market valuation in-game is £60.5 million but you're more likely to spend around 90 to 100 million pounds on the guy. He does have a release clause, 107 million pounds, but I wouldn't uh, advise you to meet that clause and, and just buy him outright. Whilst it would be easier, I'd recommend negotiating instead because you can get him for under that. We agreed a deal of 95 million pounds with the Italian side, a weekly wage of 210,000 pounds and a sign-on bonus of just under 2 million pounds. It was a massive contract, a massive signing, over half our budget, half our massive budget, 
year with signing on just a one player. But I did it on the first day because Cooley Barley is absolutely fantastic. He's got some incredible defensive stats and he is really going to make your back line look like such a stronger unit as a back four. So Cooley Barley, definitely my number one target in a Manchester City career mode. I gave him the number six as well. Uh, 28 years old, yes. Yeah, so only has about three or four years before he starts decreasing rating, but 89 rated, medium high work rate, six foot two, power header trait, uh, 95 strength, and his defensive stats are absolutely fantastic as well, including 91 defensive awareness as well. Really good stats. And I do believe as well, he will get better in the first couple of seasons, despite the fact he's now in his late 20s. So Cooley Barley, without question, question my primary target to recommend to you guys from Manchester City career mode you will be spending upwards of 90 million pounds to get him in but you get what you pay for trust me it is worth bringing in the Senegalese centre-back he is definitely worth that very expensive transfer fee and contract as well so after signing Cooley Barley we'd spend over half our budget on just the one player on the first day but again definitely worth doing uh, in my opinion bringing in one of the best centre-backs in the game and your answer for Virgil van Dijk and speaking Speaking of centre-backs, I'd also recommend selling this guy, uh, Nicolas Otamendi, the Argentine. Uh, we agreed a deal with £19.8 million from the French side, Monaco. Now, Otamendi is, 80, is he 81 or 82 rated. Regardless, not bad stats on Otamendi. But at 32 years old, he's likely to decrease in rating in the very first season. And personally speaking, you can get someone around the same ability as Otamendi in the first season for around the same sort of fee as you'll negotiate the sale for. And I'm I'll definitely look to do that as well. You know, sell Otamendi in the first season, bring in someone younger with much better potential as well. So you're not taking a massive decrease in quality in terms of the overall, but you're getting someone better for the future since Otamendi, after signing Akuli Bali, will now be a fourth slash fifth choice centre half. But uh, for more new signings with Man City, I would definitely look to, uh, look to bring in a backup goalkeeper as well. Now, of course, I talked about him earlier real briefly. You've got Zach Steffen, the young American, who right now is out on loan. I'd keep him out on loan, though, for game time. Right now, 77 rated and bringing a better backup goalkeeper to replace Claudio Bravo. Bravo's deal is up come the end of the season. I would not give him a new one as he's now in his mid-30s. I'd look to bring in a replacement. I had two names for you there, one of which was Dominic Livakovic of Dinamo Zagreb, who he agreed a £20 million deal for. He's 23 years old, but already 80 rated. So despite the fact he's 12 or 13 years younger than Claudio Bravo, he's three ratings higher than a Chilean right from the get-go, get despite being over a decade younger than the South American. Definitely worth picking up. Libico, which will get better and better as the years go by. And whilst he probably won't replace Edison as your number one throughout the years you're at the Etihad Stadium, he will be a much safer pair of hands. And his distribution might not be as good as Claudio Bravo, so Pep probably wouldn't like him as much as the Chilean. His shot stopping is far better. He's much more composed. His handling is better as well. Definitely worth bringing in as a replacement for Claudio Bravo. You're going to let the Chilean go come the end of the season or in the first window if you, if you can negotiate a sale for him which I would recommend doing. Livakovic for £20 million to sit on your bench, be a much safer pair of hands and a reliable backup for Edison is definitely who I would look to bring in as a backup shot stopper for the Brazilian. But uh, for even more signings with Man City, even after the signing of Kuli Bali for £95 million and Livakovic, we still had more money to play with, of course, due to the monster budget we were given to start the season off. I would recommend bringing in a new left back. Now, some of you guys will be wondering why on earth I would do that. Now, City have got Benjamin Mendy, who's done so well to recover from that serious injury he suffered in his first season at the Etihad. They've got Zinchenko, uh, the Ukrainian, a very decent young talent. And of course, don't forget this season, they've bought back Angelino. They opted to uh, activate that buyback clause and bring him back to the Etihad. So you've got three decent left backs there. And why would I bring in Alex Tellez? Well, it's because in the first season, you're asked to win the treble. And therefore, you need the best players you can get. And at 80 rated, Mendy is still a very decent left back, but Tellez is only a couple years older, yet four ratings higher and has a two rating growth for his potential and therefore can reach 86 and possibly even more with the dynamic potential as well. We agreed a deal of Porto of 40 million pounds so 11 and a half million over his transfer by um, transfer valuation but he's got some fantastic stats. High high work rate, really high stamina solid player and team player traits which you guys know I absolutely love. He's quick, he's got great stamina, technically he's fantastic when going forward. I think it's 89 crossing so on the offensive end this 
guy is really going to be helping your front three out, and he's a step up on the options you've got right now. Yes, Sinchenko and Angelino are just 22 years old each, and they're both in their high 70s, but Tellez is six ratings higher than the Ukrainian, five ratings higher than Angelino as well, despite being just four years older, and despite being two years older than Mendy, he's also four ratings higher than the Frenchman as well. I'll bring Tellez in for an improvement in quality in your back line, so Koulibaly and Tellez, now part of your back four, it makes it look much stronger than it did when you first took over. So unfortunately because of that, you now got four great left backs here, you can't play them all. My recommendation would be to sell one in the first transfer window. Of course, Angelino's just been bought back, so you won't be able to sell him in the first window. See, Otamendi goes here for £19.8 million. Pounds. So it's one of Zinchenko or Mendy. Mendy is, of course, a few years older than Zinchenko, but he is two ratings higher, and they both have the same potential at 85. So personally speaking, I'd look to sell Zinchenko in the first window. If you want to loan him out, that's also totally fine as well, but I'd look to get the cash in the first window. I actually uh, messed up this deal here of RB Leipzig. I was asking for a, a really big sell-on clause. I think it was 20 percent because obviously Zinchenko is going to be worth a lot of money in the future and the German side just said nah piss off mate 20% sell on clause why don't we just give you the details to our bank accounts so we just said no and they said no fair enough but the day after we got a bid here from Leon and West Ham uh, for Mendy and Zinchenko uh, the French side wanted to take the French left back once again my recommendation is to keep Mendy and sell Zinchenko if you want to do it the other way around and sell Mendy you can pr probably get more money for the Frenchman and keep the Ukrainian here that's totally fine but personally speaking I'd opt to sell the Ukrainian instead we sold into West Ham for 21.3 million pounds. No sell on clause, unfortunately, but that's around 10 million pounds over his valuation and. Since you've got Mendy, you've got Angelino, and of course you've got your new man Alex Tellers as your starting left back, you're not going to play Zinchenko at all in the first season. So if you can get around 20 million for him, that's a pretty decent sale right there, despite the fact he is still young with very good potential. But following that, we did get a bid here for Kyle Walker. Now, there's no need to sell Kyle Walker in the first season. I certainly wouldn't put him on the transfer list. Now, he is 29 years old, and he'll turn 30 come the end of the season. But at 84 rated, valued at 23 million pounds, there is no need to sell him whatsoever. However, we got a bid here from Milan and we negotiated it to £35 million. You see Sinchenko go here for £21.3 million. We get £19 million out of the budget right there. £35 million for Kyle Walker is a very decent sale for the experienced English right back. So in the end, you'll see he does go to the San Siro for £35 million, which is a, a sale which I wasn't expecting when I started the career mode off, but a very decent deal to get for the 29-year-old. But again, I, I wouldn't recommend men putting him on the transfer list as eventually we do manage to sell Claudio Bravo at like the third or fourth time of asking here, the, the second time actually, why did I say the third or fourth time, the second time but uh, I didn't expect to sell Walker but £35 million, it is actually a really good sale and after selling those fullbacks there, Walker and Zinchenko for a combined total of around £56 million that bumped our budget up to around 85 to £86 million, and therefore I went looking for a new right back, Jao Cancelo is the same rating as Carl Walker at 84 overall and he's also several years younger as well but once selling Walker you definitely wouldn't be against picking up a new right back to compete with Jao Cancelo I was a starting right back or as a backup right back for the Portuguese fullback and I'd recommend one of these three names here Joshua Kimmich of Bayern, Danny Carvajal of Real Madrid or Trent Alexander-Arnold of Liverpool. Now, Kimmich would be my first choice. He's 24 years old, but the highest rate at 86 overall. Sadly, Bayern wouldn't let him go because uh, right now he's uh, he's one of very few players that play right back for Bayern in the game, and therefore he don't have enough depth in the position. But I went after Trent Alexander-Arnold, as we know, one of the best fullbacks, uh, best young fullbacks in the world. 83 rated, yet just 20 years old. Valued at 28.5 million pounds. We agreed to deal with Klopp for 50 million pounds, which coincidentally, if I'm uh, remembering correctly, was the same fee as City bought Raheem Sterling for all those years ago. Zidane wanted far too much money for Danny Carvajal, so I said in the end, fine, you keep the Spaniard, we'll go over, at, uh, we'll go after Alexander Arnold instead. We agreed a deal of 150 grand a week on a five-year contract, half a million pounds signal bonus, and a rotation squad stats as well, meaning he won't mind sitting on the bench in a few games if you prefer to play Jao Cancelo. And Trent Alexander Arnold pulled a Raheem Sterling and left Liverpool to join Manchester City at 20 years old. So I thought that was really coincidental there. Of course, Sterling was 20 when he swapped 
Tan Field for the Etihad Stadium. Alexander Arnold is also 20 when he swapped down and field for the Etihad Stadium. And again, the fees are around the same. I think Sterling's was around £50 million at the time. Might have been slightly under that. I can't remember now. It was a few years ago. And uh, Alexander Arnold's fee was £50 million. But 83 overall, whilst it is one rating lower than Kyle Walker, he's nine years younger than Kyle. And therefore, he's not going to exactly be a massive downgrade on Walker. And he's got basically the same overall with much higher potential. If you give him the game time and nurture that dynamic potential, he will get into the 90s. I think his potential is uh, is 89. It might actually be 90. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. But it's around that regardless. So much higher potential, of course, than Kyle Walker, despite the fact he is just one rating lower. Definitely a great replacement for Kyle. And again, whilst I wouldn't recommend sell it, I recommend selling Walker in the first season. If you can get a bit of around £35 million, definitely do cash in on the late 20-year-old and look to bring in a replacement. And again, I know it's not realistic. I know, I know, I know. But this series isn't about realistic signings. Just help you out with uh, some good deals. I definitely recommend Alexander-Arnold as the replacement as he swaps Anfield for the Etihad Stadium. And then it's up to you who you'd rather play, Jao Cancelo or Alexander-Arnold. Both very young. Both with great potential. Both about the same overall. But uh, for even more signings with City, I wouldn't recommend a new third-choice striker. We are going to deal with uh, PSV for Doniel Malen, who is a really, really good young talent, just 20 years old. Uh, the deal was £16 million pounds, uh, for the striker. He can also play left wing as well. He is so quick, really, really quick, and uh, a great striker in game as well. 77 overall with great potential as well. He's got the exciting prospect tag, and the reason why I pick him up is because you've got Sergio Aguero, but of course he's now 31 years old, and due to start decreasing in rating right from the first season, and Gabriel Jesus is on the bench, but you've only got two official strikers in the team. There's no one else there, and of course you can move some players to striker. Sterling could definitely play out there if you wanted to do so, but I'd recommend bringing in a third-choice striker, and uh, Malen is definitely my target there. 77 rated. He won't complain about game time in the first season either, as you see we, see we do sell Claudio Bravo there, and he's a really good player to nurture for the future. Once Aguero starts to uh, drop in quite a few ratings, you can phase him out for Gabriel Jesus and put Malen on the bench as your backup striker. But still following that, we saw after the season ticket sales, we had about £30 million remaining in our budget, and we talked about it earlier after the sale of Otamendi, who after the signing of Koulibaly would become your fourth choice centre-back with Man City. I wouldn't be against bringing in a new one. Now, of course, you could drop Fernandinho to play centre-half, like we've seen in real life under Pep, uh, as your fourth choice centre-back option, if you'd wish to do so. But I'd recommend bringing in a new fourth choice centre-back, someone that's uh, much younger than Otamendi, but around the same overall, with higher potential as well. There's four names on the shortlist here. You've got Akanji of Borussia Dortmund, Diaz of Benfica, Konate of Leipzig, and also Tylo Kera of Paris Saint-Germain as well. Uh, Akanji is the highest rate of 24 years old and 82 overall, but unfortunately I just could not get a decent deal with the German side, so we just end in negotiations there. Uh, with Tylo Kera of Paris Saint-Germain though, he's valued at 14.5 mil. You won't have to spend much over the valuation to get him. We agreed to deal with a French club of 19.6 million pounds and no sell-on clause. Couldn't get a decent deal with Konate of RB Leipzig, so I decided to go for Kera instead. We agreed to deal 58 grand a week on a four-year contract rotation squad status, and Tyler Kera became our new fourth choice centre half to replace Nicolas Otamendi. Now he is two or three years, uh, two or three ratings lower than Otamendi, but he's around 10 years younger than the Argentine, and therefore he's going to have much higher potential than the South American. He's going to get way better in the future, and come the end of the first season, he's probably going to be the same rating as Nicolas Otamendi as well. So whilst it does look like you're taking a step back for the future, it's a giant leap forward. So I definitely recommend bringing Kerr in. Again, you can get him for around 20 million, perhaps even under a tw under 20 million pounds. I definitely recommend bringing him in. He's got a five-star weak foot, which is really handy on a centre-back when you're a team to play out for the back. And he can also slide over to right back if you're having injury uh, injury depth or squad depth issues, I should say, in that position, which is also really useful as well. So Kerr came in and I did decide to try and make a couple more signings. I had around 10 million pounds remaining in the budget at this point. So I thought, why not I'll snap up some youngsters for squad depth and potential for the future as well. Uh, the first player I went after was Della Vega uh, here, the Argentine 18-year-old. This is one of the best teenage wingers you can get in the game and he won't cost you much money either. We agreed a deal of four million pounds to get him and as you can see, he's got high 80 potential with dynamic potential, can get into the 90s, can become one of the very best players in the world once he starts peaking. He's quick to begin with, he's agile, he's got good balance and very good dribbling as well at just 18 years old. High medium work rates, definitely worth bringing in as a player for the future, not as a player for now. You know, behind Sterling, Sane, uh, Mares, you know, he's not going to get a game in, in the first season, obviously, but he's a player for the future.
feature. You can have him playing cup games if you want or loan him out. Totally up to you, but definitely worth bringing him regardless if you've still got the cash after signing all of those players earlier. And also new, uh, uh, Nunez, uh, River Plate in the game, but called Nunez due to licensing issues. Uh, we, we're going to deal with them for their young striker, Julian Alvarez. Uh, 68 overall, 19 years old. So another young Argentine talent with high 80 potentials. With him being Argentine as well, it's quite nice. We can learn under Sergio Aguero as a mentor uh, for him. And uh, yeah, Alvarez, another really good, talented young Argentine there. We agree to deal. I think it's £1.8 million. Pounds, or 1.7 million maybe with uh, with River Plate. And uh, a fourth choice uh, striker there who, again, in the first season probably won't get a game. And if he does, probably only like one or two come the end of the season. But he'll grow quietly in the reserves. Won't complain about game time in his first few years. And again, with high 80 potential, definitely worth picking up as an option for the future whilst not costing you much money now. And we had a tiny bit of money remaining after signing those two South American talents there. And decided to go after a new third choice right back. Two names on my shortlist, Max Ahrens of Norwich City and also Jaden Bogle of Derby County as well. Uh, around the same overall, around the same age as well. They're both 19 years old and Bogle is one rating lower than Max Ahrens, but they're, they're around the same ability-wise really in the game of around the same potential as well in the mid-80s. Uh, we agreed to deal with both clubs here. I decided to go after Ahrens in the end as he has one rating higher for potential and one rating higher in the overall as well. We agreed a 24 and a half grand a week and as you can see in the top left there, we spent basically every single penny after this signing. Max Ahrens basically was the final dagger uh, and the final bid we could uh, we could negotiate with a club as we were officially out of money after that. But Aaron shows great potential. Again, I think he's got 85, perhaps 84 potential in the game. 72 overall and of course after the signing of Alexander Arnold with Jao Cancelo here as well he's probably not going to play much in the first team in the first couple of seasons but he's got good potential. He'll sit in the reserves. He won't complain about game time and with good potential as well. If Yo decides to cash in on Cancelo or Alexander Arnold, this guy wouldn't be a bad replacement. If not, then a player for the bench and a player for your resis for all the years you'll be at the Etihad Stadium. So, following those three young talents signing there, that was officially that. We had spent every single, well, almost every single penny at the Etihad Stadium in the first season. And despite having a budget of £167 million, we'd spent it all. We'd signed nine players for a whopping 251 and a quarter million pounds in the first window. We also sold four players as well for 77 and a quarter million as well. So it was a net loss in the end of 174 million pounds in the first transfer window. But I think it was a really great window. He brought in some great players for the future, some really good young talents in Aaron's and the two young Argentines as well. We brought in Cooley, Barley and Alex Tellez, two really great defenders to help bolster our back line. Livakovic, an improvement on Bravo as the backup goalkeeper. Milen as a good first choice striker just in general a really good window and of course Alexander Arnold coming in as a much younger player than Kyle Walker and better for the future of course despite being about the same overall a really good window but would those new signings deliver on the pitch of course don't forget we need to win treble in our first season as per norm we'd simulate to the end of the season where I'll be honest here, it was a bit disappointing we did not retain our Premier League title as Liverpool won the crown this year uh, winning it by seven points in the end 35 wins in 30 games. City finished runners-up with 100 points, so there's no shame in not winning the title with 100 points on the board and losing to Liverpool there. So Liverpool won the Premier League and they won a Community Shield as well uh, over Manchester City. In the Carabao Cup, we didn't retain that either. Spurs won that in the final beating Liverpool, so no trophies there domestically in the Carabao Cup or the Premier League or the FA Cup as well. Arsenal won it in an all-North London affair, but... We did redeem ourselves, and thankfully, I was really, really nervous looking at the Champions League there. I was thinking, please, 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 let me know that we, we won at least something this year, and we did. Man City won the Champions League. They beat Dortmund in the semis on their way to beating Bayern by three goals to nil in the final to capture the Holy Grail. For those curious, they were knocked out in the fifth round of the FA Cup by Arsenal in a 3-2 affair at the Etihad Stadium. So, it was a bit of a failure in the first season. I'll be the first to admit it. Domestically, it definitely was. Finishing runners-up to Liverpool in the Premier League and getting knocked out in the last 16 of the FA Cup as well. A pretty big failure domestically. I'll be the first to admit it. Although, interestingly enough, I didn't notice here come the end of the season. In January, uh, when I was simulating, I didn't come back for this, they'd sold Ilkay Gundogan to Barcelona for £51.8 million. Pounds. Of course, I had no control over that. They sold him to, uh, to Barca for £51.8 million, pounds, therefore worsening our side. And uh, David Silva was going to join Manchester United on a free transfer come the end of the season. But 
Either way, still a failure regardless of how you look at it in the first season. Failing to uh, retain those domestic uh, trophies there and unfortunately as well having a pretty abysmal run in the FA Cup getting knocked out in the last 16. However, as we run through the side here and you'll see there were improvements for all of our signings in the first season. This is the importance of bringing in the younger players that can grow right from the get-go, right in the first season. You take a look at the stats of the players here. Cooley Barley. This is why you spend big on Cooley Barley. He grew two ratings in the first season despite being in his late 20s. Got to pick up Cooley Barley. He is my number one target from Man City career mode. Alexander Arnold grew two ratings as well and therefore grew higher than uh, Kyle Walker was rated at at the start of the season so not a bad swap there at all. They've had a very good swap there after you'd sold Kyle Walker but for the Champions League to, to win the Champions League I think if you were to ask Man City fans whether they would take that failing to retain any of the three domestic trophies they won last season but picking up the Holy Grail, picking up the Champions League as we know like Paris Saint-Germain that's the trophy the board really want. They can do it domestic as many times as they like but picking up that Champions League trophy that's the one the board really want if you were to ask City fans whether they would take failing to retain those three domestic trophies but pick up their first Champions League I think they would take it yes of course domestically you couldn't hide it it was a failure but I still think they'd be pretty satisfied knowing they have finally captured their first ever Champions League and when you take a look at the squad here as well bringing in Alexander-Arnold bringing in Koulibaly bringing in Tellez you see our back four has now gotten stronger with Koulibaly at 91 over overall and Tellez and Alexander Arnold both 85 overall the youngsters all improving Malen and Kerr hitting 80 overall it is a much better team come the end of first season than the one you started off with and it looks much better for the future with all those young prospects you're able to snap up as well so I will personally despite the fact we did fail domestically in our first season still recommend those signings there as you now have a much better back line a better backup goalkeeper for the bench and a much brighter future with the young talents you're able to to bring in to give you an improvement in your squad depth for the Etihad as well. But that will on today's episode of Who Design For, guys. Really hope you have enjoyed it. And if the tips did help you, then please do drop a like. If you're new to the channel, please do click that subscribe button as I upload FIFA 20 career mode videos every single day. And let me know in the comment section down below as well what team you want me to do next in the Who to Sign For series. Have a great day, guys, and I'll see you for the next episode of Who to Sign For very soon.